Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about dye atoms. So in this video, I'm going to discuss about introduction, the application of dye atoms in forensic science, how dye atoms can tell us about cause of death, time of death, place of death, and the dye atom test, which includes acid digestion test and soluene 350 test. So first introduction. Dye atoms are unicellular. Unicellular means that they are made up of single type of cell. Then they are photosynthetic, that is they can produce their own food. They are eukaryotic microalgae. Eukaryotic means that they have a well membrane bound nucleus. So dye atoms are unicellular photosynthetic eukaryotic microalgae. Now they can be either benthic or planktonic. Benthic means that they can either be attached to the substrate so if they are benthic that means their diatoms are attached to a surface whereas planktonic means they are living in an open water space all right so they can be benthic or planktonic now siliceous skeleton they have a siliceous skeleton this means that their skeleton is made up of silica now the silica skeleton of diatom is, is also known as frustule and they are found in almost every aquatic environment so diatoms are found in all mostly in all the water bodies which includes fresh water as well as marine waters they are also found in soil and in fact they uh, almost uh, exist everywhere in the world wherever there is moisture all right then there is a field of study called forensic limnology so it Forensic limnology is basically a subfield of freshwater ecology in which the main focus is on the dye atoms and how can dye atoms be used in order to solve crime cases. All right. Then dye atoms play a very important ecological role also. They are responsible for the 20% global carbon fixation and 40% of marine productivity so overall they play a very important uh, ecological role also now dye atoms consist of striking patterns of silica as you can see here in the picture dye atoms are present in a number of different shapes and sizes and different different patterns all right so these are different patterns of silica their cell wall is made up of silica the outer layer is made up of silica so they are they are present in a number of varieties in different shapes and sizes now if we talk about the application in forensic science so diatoms can help us establish three things first determine they can help help us in determination of cause of death then the time since death and place of death i'll be discussing all these three in the in my video now first let's talk about cause of death now diatoms can help us tell whether the drowning in the water is anti-mortem drowning or post-mortem drowning anti-mortem drowning means that the person when the person is thrown into the water the person was alive at that time whereas post-mortem drowning means that the person has been killed first and the body is simply thrown into the water so this is post-mortem drowning now uh, these diatoms can help us determine whether it is anti-mortem or post-mortem now let's understand how so the basic principle of diatom test that I'm going to discuss next. First, let's understand how diatoms travel in the body in drowning is based on the inference that diatoms are present in medium where drowning took place. All right. So how can diatom help us? Because diatoms were present in the water body. So they are present in the medium where the drowning took place and the inhaled water now if it is anti-mortem drowning that is the person was alive when he was he or she was thrown into the water so if there is live entry then what happens is that the person will be inhaling the water so what will happen is that the water uh, that the dye atoms that are present in the water along with the water are going to get inside the body of the person because the body because the person is trying to inhale because the person wants oxygen 
so what happens is that the dye atoms are going to reach the lungs of the person and since the person is still alive so the uh, uh, and lungs are a part of our circulation so what happened what is going to happen is that the dye atoms are going to become a part of the circulation they are going to reach the heart and they are going to reach different parts of the body including the bone so it, it is going to reach uh, in the bone marrow and the atoms will be present in the liver in heart in bone marrow in it because they become a part of the circulation because the person is still alive but what happens when a dead body is dumped like in this case a person has been killed and after that the body has been thrown into the water body so here there is no circulation in the body since the person is already dead so what happens is that they might due to passive percolation the diatom might reach the lungs that too in a small amount because the pathway the body is inside the body some of the water might enter there through the nose of the person so a few diatoms might be present might reach the lungs but since the person is not alive there is no circulation hence the there will be no add diatoms found in the heart or in the bone marrow or in the liver etc so on the basis of that we can determine whether the person was thrown the the person was first killed and then thrown into water or the person was directly thrown into the water when the person was alive or if the person or another case can be that the person might have fell into the water accidentally all right then we can also determine the time since death when using diatom testing scientists observe the amount of diatoms that are present in the organism so on the basis of that we determine time since death like for example if there are fewer than 20 different species of colonizing diatom if there are 20 if 20 or less species present in the sample then the organism's death could have been within the previous 7 to 12 days but if there is if there are more than 50 different colonies of diatom then it is determined that the death possibly occurred several weeks ago so these are just certain estimation and these are not conclusive we cannot determine the concrete time since death all right then if we talk about place of death then place of death can also be determined how like if the body is dumped in the water and due to water current the body is transferred from one place to another all right uh, so it has reached some place away from where it was originally dumped then the type of diatoms at the original place and the type of diatoms present in the body can be matched and if same kind of diatoms are present then we can say that the body was dumped at that particular place so this is how place of death can be determined but this is also not very much um, reliable as such now talking about diatom test now in this we are going to take the sample first this test is also known as acid digestion method now the sample might be taken from bone marrow lung spleen liver kidney etc so for example we have taken the bone femur and from there we have extracted out 50 gram of bone marrow okay so 50 gram of bone marrow is taken then we add 50 ml of concentrated hno3 or nitric acid to it then we are going to boil it for nearly 48 hours after that the color of the mixture initially it was yellow and uh, after boiling it it uh, should change into transparent color after that it is cooled down then after cooling down it is centrifuged and it is washed in order to remove all the organic components now in after that the supernatant is discarded and rest what will be left is the acid resistant material which is the diatom diatoms are not um, affected by the acid because the cell wall is made up of silica which is a very hard metal and acid cannot digest the silica hence diatoms are only diatoms are left all the other parts of the sample are digested out then 
we take that on a slide and it is observed microscopically like this diatom type of diatom is seen now this diatom can be further matched with the diatom present in the water body where the person's body was dumped there is another test called soluene 350 method for this is for fresh water samples here in this sample is taken and formalin is added to it after that it is rinsed then it is centrifuged three times with distilled water and the pallet is removed then 8 ml of soluene 350 solution is added to it it is incubated for two hours and after that centrifugation is done then it is seen over the slide and the types of diatom are seen so this was all about diatoms. I hope you found the video to be useful. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.